Hi, hello everybody. This is International Master Asaf Givon here. And today we're going to discuss a new topic, which is the pawn storm. So, um, what, e what is exactly a pawn storm in chess? So, it's generally regarded as a situation in which uh, the pawns start to storm um, the king, uh, the enemy king, in order to open up uh, some lines to attack him. So, in the first example, I'm going to illustrate a very kind of pure form of the pawn storm. So, in this position, um, it's a very quiet theoretical position of the Queen's Gambit decline. Uh, White decided rather than just uh, castling short and trying to play a normal game. He actually decided to castle long here and try to initiate an attack on the king side and starting a pawn storm with moves such as g4 and h4. So this is uh, perhaps the first and foremost uh, principle of the pawn storm that if you want to storm uh, your opponent with pawns you really want to put your king on the other side of the board so when you move the pawns on the other side it would not be weakened. So black played here is pawn to c5, trying to create some counterplay in the center of the board. And now white started his general plan of pushing the pawns on the king side. He played h4. So on the next moves, what white will try to achieve is basically to move his h and g pawn uh, as much forward as possible and try to open up the open lines, open files against the black king. So black played his pawn to c4, bishop f5, rook e8. Now white decided to actually take the knight on f6 because the bishop on g5 was an obstacle for the pawn on g2 which is about to be advancing forward. Black recaptured with the knight and now white started or rather continued his pawn storm with the move g4. So basically white is saying to black I'm going to play g5, h5, g6 on the next moves and trying to destroy your king position. So in this kind of situation I, I would suggest for black uh, to try to create some counterplay on the queen side on or just on the other side of the board but we will we would come to the part in which i explain some methods of a defense of the let's say defensive side of the pawn, pawn storm but in this game black black played rather passively he played his bishop to d6 white continued with g5 attacking the knight knight e4 and h5 so white is already perhaps uh, preparing to play the move pawn to g6 and by this way breaking through the king position and creating some uh, open files for his king. And black did not do too much to resist, he played his queen to e7. Now white played one more preparatory move, rook to g1. So he is placing both of his rooks behind his pawn on g5 and h5, so to support them in their attack. Black played here his pawn to a6, preparing the move b5 with some counterplay on the queen side. But this is really too little, too late. White's pawns are already very far advanced on the king side. And now actually comes. Um, the final blow. So actually, White could very well just play his pawn to g6 here uh, with an equally strong attack on the king, but White actually found an even more forcing way to reach the black king. So you actually might want to stop the video and try to find it yourself. 
So white played here actually bishop takes h7, a very strong uh, tactical shot. The black king took the bishop, g6 check. Now it suddenly became clear that if black is taking the pawn on g6, white has a couple of ways to win from this position, but the simplest being knight takes knight. If the queen takes, white can play knight g5 check, and the queen drops on the next move. And if d takes e4, knight g5 check, and black is losing quite easily in all of the variation, let's say king g8, queen takes c4 check, now the queen also joins the attack, and black is actually getting mated after king f8, and knight h7 checkmate, a very cute checkmate. So, in the game, black actually tried to play king to g8, knight takes knight, pawn takes knight, and now, rather than moving the knight from f3, white continued with his strategy of opening up the lines against the black king, and he played his pawn to h6. So, this is a really, in my view, good illustration of white's potential in his pawn storm attack. He placed both of his rooks behind the pawns, and now the pawns are kind of crushing through black's king position. So now if the knight is taken on f3, white is just winning after pawn takes pawn on f7, queen takes f7, and now this, perhaps the simplest way to win is just to take the pawn on g7, followed by a rook h8, which is al already checkmate. So let's pl try to play f6 in the actual game, but after h takes g7, white is already opened up the h file and is threatening to penetrate via h8, and after e takes f3, rook h8 check, king takes g7, rook h7 check, black was forced to resign because he is losing his queen on e7 on the next move, and white's attack is actually also continuing. So, this game kind of shows a very pure illustration of the power of the pawn storm. Of course, not everything is so simple in life, and in the next examples uh, I would like to discuss some options of how could the defensive side try to defend himself uh, better than in this situation. So let's move to the next example. So we have an entirely different kind of position. Uh, it's move on number 9, it's black to move. And black decided to play his pawn to h5, trying to maybe create some attack of his own on the king side with h4, rather than just developing a piece with a move such as bishop e6 or knight f6 perhaps. And after h5, white continued with h3, which is a strong reaction. Now, whenever black plays his pawn to h4, white can close up the game with the move g4, not allowing to open up the king side. So this is one good method of actually dealing with the pawn storm, is trying to get the position closed. We will see more of it later. But black very soon abandoned his plans to attack on the king side and actually decided to castle on the king side and just kind of returning to a normal type game. But we must remember that the pawn on h5 is now not on h7 anymore. So the black king position is slightly compromised and actually white will later on use this fact to attack the black king. So because of the pawn being situated on h5, white uh, was thinking about um, perhaps in the future trying to attack the black king. So he did not castle yet on the king side. He decided to keep his king in the center at the moment. He played his rook to b1, a developing move. Black played knight to e5. 
And now, this knight on e5 was actually the, let's say, uh, give, gave white a tempo for his attack, and now the move f4 once again came up with a tempo on the knight on e5, and after knight e7, now white used this pawn on h5 very well to try to open up the lines and open and start his own pawn storm on the king side, and he played this pawn with g4. So that's a very strong move. White is once again trying to open up the lines against the black king on the king side. So black should really not take the pawn on g4 because after h takes g4, now this open file is opened for the rook and it might get some devastating effect later on. So black try to play the knight to c5 here, trying to maneuver it to e4, trying to create some counterplay. And now this is a very critical moment for white's attack. So what would you actually play here with white? Try to stop the video and try to find the best continuation here for white. And remember that our goal as the side who has the pawn storm on the king, we want to open up the lines against the enemy king. So now a typical mistake would be to play here move like g5, which completely close the game on the king's side, and after knight e4, black is completely fine. So a more sensible move would be to take the pawn on h5, hoping for g takes h5, and after rook g1, we have the g file open against the king, and black white is very happy here, opening up an open file against the king. Only problem is that black could actually take with the knight on h5, and now the knight is a very solid piece on h5, which could not be driven away, and the g file remaining closed for the moment, so white did not achieve too much. So a very important move here for white is actually knight to d5. So the point is to exchange this knight on f6. This is the main defender of the black king, or perhaps the only piece defending the black king at the moment. And um, as a general principle in the attack, we want to eliminate the enemy main defender of the king. And after knight takes knight, c takes d5, white is already threatening to take the pawn on h5, and there is a very big difference in the absence of the knight on f6, that he can no longer recapture with the knight on h5, so he must re recapture with the pawn. So black's position here is already quite difficult. Black decided to take the pawn on g4, h takes g4, bishop takes g4. So, a very understandable decision. Black said to himself, if I'm already suffering, so let me at least suffer for, for a pawn, for some material. But now, with the h file being open for the white rook, white's attack becoming already very strong here. So, how should white continue here and bring more firepower to the attack. White in the game found an excellent move here which is pawn to f5, sacrificing yet another pawn but getting ready to jump with the queen over h6 and creating a deadly battery with the rook on h1, threatening checkmate. The bishop took the pawn on f5 and now come the final move of the game. Can you find the winning move here for white? And be careful because it's not as easy as it might look. So, the obvious and the very tempting move here would be the queen to h6, threatening checkmate either via h7 or via h8. But this actually fails because now black has the resource queen takes c3 check very important, and after bishop d2 or some other way to block the check, black is just in time to reach the square on g7 with the queen, 
and actually covering uh, Black's position. So coming back to this position, White have an extremely beautiful deflection of the Queen with the move Rook to b5, attacking the Queen. And now Black can take the Rook, but it really doesn't matter on which square the Queen goes, because now that there is no Queen takes c3 check anymore, White can just play his Queen to h6, and he's threatening checkmate on h8 or h7, and Black just have no defense from this. So, if you are on the defensive side, be careful, or very careful when moving your own pawns on the side of the king, as it might, as it might later uh, be used by your enemy as a target to attack, and it would be easier for him to open up the lines and to create the attack that he wants. Now, let's see another method of defense. So, this example is actually from a very classical game. So we have Boris Spassky with the white pieces, former world champion, and with the black pieces, another former world champion, Tigran Petrosian, playing with the black pieces. So in this position, white initiated uh, his pawn storm on the queen side. He played his move a4. So we see a similar situation here with uh, both kings are on opposite uh, sides. And each side will try to attack his enemy king on the next moves. But here Petrosian actually came up with a very nice concept uh, of defending his king. So can you try to find the next moves for white, uh, which uh, for black, excuse me, which completely shatter uh, white's attacking chances? So Petrosian played here the simple move c4, bishop e2, and now a very important move pawn to a6. So now. The point is that whenever white will try to push his pawns on the queen side and try to open up the lines against the king, black would just close the position here with b5, or if white plays b5 so he can play a5. So black, white's attack on the queen side is now completely stuck, and actually black play on the king side is much more easy because he already have the g file open against the white king and his attack is uh, much stronger than white's we will not see this game entirely i really invite you to watch uh, the complete game in some uh, database or other chess site but i only wanted to show the last moves of the game so i'm jumping to move number 41 the players reach this position so you see that white's attack on the queen side got nothing uh, to him, but black already had the h-file open and his pawns are very much far advanced. But here Petrosian uh, found a brilliant combination uh, to win the game. He played his knight to g4, threatening knight e3 or knight h2, and after Spassky captured his knight, he played his pawn to f3, and this is just a beautiful position. White is having a rook up in this position, but his rooks are completely helpless against the black pawns and the, and the black rook, which is coming to h1 at any moment. And he resigned after rook g2 and taking the rook. Really beautiful game. So as a defensive side, you you really want to try to keep uh, the side on which you are being attacked close as possible, not to let your opponent open any lines against your king. Now let's see the final example from the game of uh, Ivanchuk, a very strong player with the black pieces. Once again we see a situation of opposite uh, side castling. Each side is trying to attack the king on the other side of the board. And here, white, it's white to move. 
he played a typical breakthrough on the queen side. He played his pawn to g6. Once again, trying to open up the lines against the enemy king. So if black just re just captures the pawn uh, this way, this pawn drops on e6. And if he takes with the h pawn, then white can just play his pawn to h5. And the opening up of the h file is inevitable. So Ivanchuk actually came up with a brilliant concept here. Rather than letting his opponent to open up the lines, he played now the move f5, a very strong move. So obviously if this pawn is taking, the rook is lost on h1. So white made the obvious move, g takes h7 check. But then one more very important move, or rather a concept here. Instead of taking the pawn with the king, which would allow white to attack the black king with moves like queen h5 check and rook g1 when the black king is quite exposed black actually played the very calm move king h8 which is a paradoxical move not taking the pawn on h7 leaving it to be alive but it turns out very fast that the pawn on h7 actually only helps black to shelter his king position. So even though this pawn on h7 is a white pawn, is giving shelter to the black king on h8. And now actually black started his own counterplay on the queen side with the move a4 and he's later on managed to win a very fine game. So the main concepts for the defending side is to try to block uh, the enemy side of create of opening uh, opening up the lines against his own king and trying to create counterplay on the opposing side so here is black is trying to create counterplay on the queen side of the board and you see that white cannot actually keep the game closed because black will out will either take the pawn or white will take this pawn and the queen will already penetrate via the a file so these are really the main concepts that I wanted to show about the pawn storm. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I, I really enjoyed it very much. See you next time. Bye bye.